Can we call a meeting to order, or should we wait for Brother Schaefer to finish his meal? Go ahead. A couple of members that haven't shown yet, but <clears throat> we're going to be a little pushed for time, so if it's all right, everybody will go ahead and try to get some of the business out of the way. We're going to <clears throat> do our best to try to uh, get the business of this meeting completed by 2.30. We'd like very much to, let's put it that way. So keep this in mind as the uh, meeting progresses. <clears throat> the length of it will depend to a large degree upon how much discussion we're going to have on uh, the matters we have to consider. I guess perhaps the first thing that we <clears throat> need to talk to you about a little bit is the banquet uh, Tuesday night. Which, uh, of course, uh, we'll have a guest speaker. Who should be at the head table? Lord, we hate head tables, don't we? If it meets your approval, we'll yeah, do something like this. <clears throat> we'll have a head table up here. On This is going to be the front of the convention hall. This stage here is where it'll be. We'll have a table with Tom Knight and his wife and me and my wife with the guest speaker and the and Reverend Davis is going to give the invocation and his wife. If that's satisfactory, everybody, we'll limit it to that. Sounds fine to me. If we go in further than that, we're going to have trouble because everybody then will want to be at the head table. <coughs> we'll all have to move to the back of the room for the head table again. Is that going to suit everybody? It's fine. Right. That arrangement? Sounds good. Okay, that's taken care of. <coughs> Need to approve the minutes of the last my secretary advises me we need to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, you like I believe to read they'd be approved as mailed out. I second. Uh, we have a motion and a second that the minutes be approved as were mailed out. Do we have a discussion on that motion? Not all in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried is ordered. We should have saved about 30 minutes there. <laughs> on the, the other, we got another problem that we need some help on. Uh, we charged a $15 restoration fee for the delegates to the convention, which includes the cost of, uh, of the banquet. Question is, what should we do about uh, international reps, full-time business agents, and people like that that uh, will be attending a convention that perhaps will want to attend the banquet and have a meal with us? The question is, should we charge those people charge them. or not? Charge if we are going to charge them, how much? Well, you're going to have some exceptions to that now. Sure. The speakers, the convention speakers, yeah. well, people that's like that. that. That's story. I'm about right. International reps, the one that's coming in, the machinist can turn it in. Most of those people on right. on the expenses on per dime. We had felt, uh, Tom and myself, uh, kicking this around a little bit. It felt perhaps ten dollars wouldn't be bad to charge them for a ticket, for the meal ticket. The meal itself is going to run what Tom about eight and a half. About eight and a half. Well, if that's all it's uh, involved, I would say 10 would be enough. Mm -hmm. It's the meal itself. Yeah. And the national reps, 10. I want to get this straight. Think about this a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this will strictly be for international reps, full-time business agents that don't have a voice, don't have a vote. They'll have a now, voice. Now, let me ask you this. What right. if an international <laughs> rep comes in and tells you he can only append two or three of the sessions and not going to stay for the banquet? Well, this we're is only for the banquet. We're, we're talking not going to make a charge unless right. they attend the banquet. I just want that to be because some of them may not stay. So if he wants a ticket, wants to attend the banquet, then uh, we give him a ticket for $10. That's just for the banquet. That's what we're talking about. The reason I raise that, one or two people have mentioned to me they might want to come in for the day Monday or speak. they got well, other things uh, to do, but no they won't even be here when that. the banquet is. See, the so. tickets, the we're registration Strictly talking about the banquet yeah. now. The registration yeah. committee will have the tickets out there. And of right. course, you'll issue tickets to the delegates that have paid, right. and you'll sell tickets to all of those in right. the categories that we've right. spoken right. about. 
then when the international reps register, we're going to have to find out from them where they're going to stay. Oh, yeah. Stay. And if so, we got to get 10 bucks. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, I'll move that we charge $10 in the whole business, agents and reps. Okay. That won't attend the banquet or not duly registered down. Right. right. We have a second of that motion? We have a question. Yes, sir. Well, that's, that's going to put them in the same category in terms of the meal. The meal is what we, that's what's going to run the cost of the thing up so high as that uh, eight and a half for the steak, you know. Uh, I would say that uh, anyone that's not a duly registered delegate other than the invited guests participate would have to buy the ticket, I suspect. Well, I mean, I, I had my wife, and I was the one that asked the question. Well, we're, we're talking about anybody that I guess that <coughs> wants to attend the thing, the, the, the banquet. Yeah. Right. The well, ticket. You, you named out those uh, business agents, you know. Well, we're thinking, about, we're thinking about guests that will attend the, banquet. attend the banquet. Now, the people that we've invited to participate in the program naturally will be here as our guests. Right. We right. won't be charging those right. people. Right. But we're going to have, say, we usually have 30, maybe 40 uh, international reps, uh, guests, people want to bring their wives, people like this, and when you, when, you, when you say, you know, eight and a half times 40 people, it's going to run us into a hunk of money, and I don't think we can afford it. It'd be nice if we could invite all these people in as our guests and not charge them anything. No, I think we should charge all guests to attend the banquet ten dollars. All guests that are not not here at the guest of us. Right. right. This is what we're talking about of the state FLCL. Is that pretty well understood now and agreed upon? Yeah. It's 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 a problem to deal with. We have to deal with this one every two years. Who is our banquet speaker, by the way? Uh, he's on the agenda down there. Oh, uh, well, I didn't Will go Campbell. There. Will Campbell. Okay. He's from Rod Four Liberty, Mississippi, and uh, he's a relative of uh, Jerry Flower, Flower by ma marriage. He's supposed to be a pretty good after-dinner speaker. Well, let me ask one more question. Yeah. Are these guests that's going to attend, you should know so you can prepare for them pretty soon, don't you? you know, right? The guests yeah, that we... Yeah, we're going to have to know. I mean, I, I, I don't want to... Yeah, we have to. We'll have to have this information th uh, Tuesday morning. Yeah, no, we well, have it tomorrow. Church. Like church. Like it won't yeah, wait till Tuesday. Yeah, we'll find out that at the registration. Well, <laughs> it all gets it un unless yeah. unless the guest is invited to this convention as guest of the organization. We provide those people with the meal <coughs> ticket. Any other guest that wants to attend a banquet will have to buy the ticket, right? Is that what we're talking about? Right. That's the way I understand. No right yeah. 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 Yeah, Tom, I guess Tom's going to be handling the catering services. Right. Too. You ought to know how many it's going to be so they can Right. Well, well if, the people, if the people if the people would walk, get their tickets right. when they register, then he'd yeah. know that cuz we he we tell him how many we sell. Urge yeah. the people as we'll they have, come in you'll have to have the ticket to come into the banquet hall <laughs> and we'll have to give them the <coughs> number based upon the number of tickets right. that's been uh, given that? out, you see? Mm -hmm. If the registration the committee the will, as they come right. by, remind a husband or a wife, you know, if they're going to be here, insist on them telling you and buying the ticket in order that we can let them know early tomorrow morning. Because they well, buy the food tomorrow morning, they give it Tuesday night. <laughs> 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 Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. we ready for the question? All in favor of the motion, signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so on. Okay. Let's get to the committee.
Is you should have copies of the of the committees. Now I have deliberately kept the number of people on those committees down to a bare minimum, thinking perhaps some of you would have somebody that you'd like to place on one of the committees. So if you will, we'll take a few minutes and give you an opportunity to, to go over each committee before we ask you to approve them. And if you've got any, any people or anybody that you'd like to recommend, then we'll try to get them on there. Just don't ask to be removed from anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Well, that I won't be ought, recognized. I think you ought to put some more women on this first committee here. The first, the the first one. Women. They got us out number two to one. <laughs> We've already <laughs> got <laughs> I wanted to move some off the second one and, and transfer some from the first. No way. No way. No way. I don't care. You don't have very many women on that constitution. Well, well, I'd like to make a recommendation to the second committee of the all male committee that you had Ed Lowe. President of the you got two. Oh, male, there's two women on it. If I, I read their names right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't yeah, think Mayor and Dorothy's men. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, on we on the moves on another committee yeah. over here. I tell, I'd suggest you read all the committees. Like right. The W.H. Wood chairman, <clears throat> John Abrams and Boilermakers, uh, West Point, uh, Darla Petit, Part of her name out here, lift an R out of there. Darla Petit uh, from uh, Water Valley, Sarah Chestnut from uh, Kosciuszko, Gold Smith from Natchez, rubber worker Margaret Towery, a machinist from Pascagoula, and Loretha Hunter, an aluminum worker from Grenada. Cecil, let me ask you a question on that. She's a member of your local. She black or white? Black. Well, we got it. We thought she was. We weren't real sure about that. Uh, now, if any of these people are nominated, ready to take up the committees now. <coughs> we got any suggestions on any of the committees that we don't have here? Uh, Wood is from the Carpenters, Abrams the baller maker. Dollar Petit is a clothing worker. Sarah Chestnut is a communication worker. Gold Smith is a rubber worker. Margaret Towery is a machinist. Loretta Hunter is an aluminum worker. We don't have IBW. All right, give us somebody from IBW. Can't get Let's See if we can get another one. Give me a woman, a black woman, if we somebody's got one from a union that's not. Uh, We've got somebody to be here tomorrow. Steel. Steel. I don't know. I don't know their name. They're from uh, 1543, and I don't know the name. From Greenville. Yeah. That's I a good place to get one. We don't have anybody from Greenville. Let me get with you tomorrow and give you a name. All right, let's leave that this way. She said they had a couple coming from Clarksdale, and you got a couple from Greenville. If we have to house somebody to replace one of these, we'll, we'll come to you all for That's that fine. suggestion, okay? That way we'll handle that. Because we might have to drop some of these we got listed down here. It's a job, I'll tell you, trying to get this kind of a committee together. One union and, 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 and a town involved, okay? All right, what about the other committees? Take a look at them now and see. You've got you've got a list of everything that's not on a committee. Oh, Bree Darsh is on one. I don't remember seeing her. Yes, she is. Yeah. On your committee. She's on the restoration. Yeah, you're on restoration well, with me, right? Uh, uh, Sergeant Barnes is going to make a motion to approve her, man. I'll yeah. start in a second. <laughs> motion is that the committees be approved. You made the motion. So you made the we motion. have a second to that motion? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. 
I thought you all were going to have a bunch of names for us here this morning. These people refuse. We can give you some names if that's what you're talking about. Right. You're going to have to poll these people, and some of them are going to refuse. I mean, you think so? Maybe. I mean, if you do, <coughs> we're going to be able to use the phone. Ah. It hasn't happened yet. Boy, that's good news. I tell you, you all can mail them out to you in hopes that we'd cut out on uh, a lot of reading and stuff like that here. Paul, let me put in right there and remind the board to please come by the registration desk later and they'll give you tags, you know, and sign the registry. You got right. the kits now. They need to get your name on the record. As okay, soon as we get through with the board meeting, the board will be the first ones to be registered out there. As soon as we get set up and open, we'll register. As soon as you're first. ready for us, right. right. Well, we'll let you leave a little ahead of time. Right. We got a bad kit here now. Is everybody ready to be yeah, I heard you, you ain't got any resolution? I don't have them all. Yeah. What you, what you mean? One, right. two, eight. I got two. Then I go to four. <laughs> no three, no one. Five. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Six. I'm getting some. You haven't got them all? Seven. Uh, just give put that back together. We'll give you another one, Mr. Williams. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah, give him uh, a. <laughs> that's another. Yeah, just swap with him. He can that's get him another set. set. I'll check them out. How about how about resolution number four, one, yeah. national health security? Health Security Program, introduced by Representatives Martha Griffiths and James Coleman, meets all of the tests for a viable national health insurance plan. We endorse it and urge favorable consideration of health security. We also urge all candidates for House and Senate, for the House and Senate, to publicly state their positions on national health insurance <laughs> so that the voters can elect supporters of national health security. Be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be sent to all members of the Mississippi AFL-CO congressional delegation. That word AFL-CO was supposed to have been eliminated from there. That ought to be struck out of the Mississippi congressional delegation. Where is right. AFL-CO? I thought I marked through that, Callan, before they started on that. Mark through AFL-CO. What's the pleasure of the board here on that resolution? I move that it be accepted as well. I second that. Any discussion? I'm sure everybody understands this is probably going to be one of the most important things to come before the Congress of the United States about the next time they meet. <coughs> Cared and so ordered. Resolution number two Political Education and <clears throat> Political Action. You want to read that, Tom, the resolve point? Okay. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this seventh biannual convention of the Mississippi AFL CIO assembled in Jackson, Mississippi, October 21, 23, 1974 recognize and express appreciation of all of those who have participated in, supported our political education and political action program through the years, thereby making our success possible, and be it further resolved that the Mississippi labor movement 
to the leadership of the state AFL-CIO and the local central body to expand and intensify our efforts in the political arena and that each delegate present accept the responsibility of seeking the active participation of every union member. And be it finally resolved that each local union establish a co committee, there is not one in existence, and initiate a campaign to collect at least $2 from each member. That copies of this resolution be sent to all affiliated and the AFL CIO Committee on Political Education. <coughs> the word unions for locals is left out there, really, after affiliated. Be all affiliated local unions? Yeah. Or all affiliated organizations is what yeah. really is. Organizations, right, I agree. Yeah. Okay, what's your pleasure on that resolution? Mr. Chairman, move the resolution number two be accepted. Number Second two be adopted. Right. Second. We have a discussion on the motion. Not all in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. The chairman of the <laughs> committees will take note of what changes are made here, and hopefully when you take these resolutions up with your committee. Let me, let me ask you a question. When this committee meets, can they read by? Uh, for that committee, and then it'll be up to your committees to who reads the resolution. But uh, the committee chairman will hand the resolution on the floor. No, you set up the time to meet with that committee when, when you want to meet with them. No. Well, I'll, I'll get I, together with you when we get ready to call up the resolutions. Well, I mean, I, I wanted you to announce from the floor who the committee was going to be and what time we would meet tomorrow, because it's going to take some, you know, right. some time. Right. Well, that's, I'll that's, get together with you yes, we'll have to get together on that. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the more, did we adopt that yes. one? <coughs> Okay, two. resolution number three. Uh, affiliation. You want to read that resolve part, Tom? Now, therefore, be it resolved that the, this, the seventh biennial convention of the Mississippi AFL CIO, does go on record expressing appreciation to the AFL CIO Executive Council and the International Unions for their past efforts in this matter and urges that they immediately intensify full affiliation campaign. Be it further resolved that the delegates assembled here take it upon themselves to contact the offices of all unaffiliated locals, urge them to get their local unions affiliated with the state AFL, CIO, and local central body. Be it finally resolved that copies of this resolution be sent to AFL, CIO, President George Meany, Secretary Treasurer Lane Kirkland, and all international unions. What's your pleasure? I move to adopt resolution for second. second. Any discussion? <coughs> if not, all in favor of the motion signify <coughs> to say an aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Resolution number four. Brother Knight, just to resolve, boy. All right. Now, therefore, be it resolved. This is the seventh biennial convention of the Mississippi AFL-CIO does go on record reaffirming support of this fund and recognizing the need to increase same. Be it further resolved that every local union in Mississippi be requested and urged to contribute at least one dollar per member to this important fund immediately. Be it finally resolved that copies of this resolution be mailed to every local advising them of this action and that the delegates assembled here assume the responsibility of seeking prompt compliance with this action. What's your pleasure? Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt and a second's been made. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Resolution number five. Bicentennial of America. <coughs> when you get tired, I'll relieve you some, but go ahead. Read the Now, resolve. therefore, be it resolved that the Mississippi AFL-CIO will cooperate with the National AFL-CIO acting through its Department of Education 
bring the contribution of the working American to the forefront in bicentennial activities. And be it further, further resolved that the executive officers of the Mississippi AFL-CIO are authorized to participate in bicentennial activities in this state to the extent they deem advisable after consultation with the Department of Education of the National AFL-CIO. It's going to be a very important event here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is going to probably be a very important resolution. It really is. Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor of resolution number five, signify for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Resolution number six. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the seventh biannual convention of the Mississippi AFL-CIO does go on record in favor of the following items. One, call upon the Congress of the United States to impose quotas on all products from all American manufacturers to cease sending their work or products to be made in foreign countries. Three, appeal to the general labor movement in the, of the United States to buy only American-made products as well as union-made products and services. Four, also to try and educate the American consumer on the grave problem facing American workers and encourage all consumers to buy American-made products as well as union-made products and services. Be it finally resolved that copies of this resolution be sent to the necessary individuals and organizations to call attention to this serious problem. Move its adoption. Second. Motion to adopt resolution number six. Any discussion? Not all in favor of the motion signified to say an aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Organizing. Number seven. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the delegates assembled in this convention do solemnly pledge their untiring efforts to bring organization to the unorganized workers of Mississippi. We will work with all segments of the labor movement to bring about, to bring this about. Two, that we urge our members to refrain from spending their hard-earned money with any and all businessmen who conspire to prevent workers from organizing and be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be mailed to the AFL-CIO and each affiliate of the AFL-CIO that we seek their cooperation in every respect. Second. The motion to adopt resolution number seven. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor of the motion signified for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Resolution number eight, the legislative program. That's uh, going to be a kind of a lengthy one. Uh, I think uh, <clears throat> perhaps we ought to just read the whole thing, uh, the whereas is yeah, on this we'll one. Read just whole. read the whereas. Is. We don't have to read each point on there because it's been pretty well adopted already. But let's read the whereas is and then the resolve Give part of it. Back. Right. Whereas in 1960, the Mississippi legislature inserted the nefarious right to work law into the state's constitution. The purpose behind this action was a deliberate move that the initiative referendum procedure be placed at the top of our legislative program, that the attached objectives be adopted as the Mississippi AFL-CIO's legislative program and be it further resolved that the legislative program be printed into an attractive brochure and that copies be mailed to each member of the legislature, the governor and the lieutenant governor. Two of the points, but otherwise it's uh, uh, the points on there are, are, are the same that were adopted at the last resolution, I mean at the last uh, board meeting. The, the reason <coughs> was that uh, I felt <clears throat> that we ought to rearrange uh, the priorities on that program centered around something like this. Uh, Clayton Moss of the steel workers told me one day in the office <clears throat> that there were some of his members been talking to him about the right to work proposition 
and that uh, somebody had been telling them that the reason that uh, <clears throat> uh, we hadn't uh, made any effort to repeal right to work was because I was opposed to it. Well, I was a little flabbergasted to this because I went on this job in fighting right to work. That's how I got on this job in 1960. I left my job trying to defeat right to work. I hadn't heard that one, Clell. Well, a little later on, a little later on, Tom and I was down in, uh, this was the Macomb meeting. We had a series of meetings in the 4th Congressional District. The young man died, of course, he's about half cropped. He didn't really know what he was saying, but he also <laughs> made some mention about the fact that, uh, that we didn't, uh, we weren't doing what we ought to do on repealing the right to work. So it occurred to me that apparently a lot of our people don't understand what this proposition is all about and what, uh, how complicated it is in trying to repeal right to work and that our plans are to try to amend the Constitution to provide for an initiative and referendum procedure. That was the reason primarily for this. And of course, you know, we have to take in consideration, I think, that we've got a lot of people that just come into the labor movement, especially since 1961, thereabout. Many of our members are not familiar with what our legislative program's all about and what our objectives are. And basically, that's the reason that we thought we ought to rephrase it and put the initiative <coughs> referendum at the top of the list. Does anybody have any comment? Or do we have a motion to adopt? Make a motion to adopt. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion to adopt resolution number eight. Do we have any discussion? Yes. All in favor of the motion to adopt signify it by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Don't get ready to leave. We got a couple of more. You just don't have them in your kit. One is dealing with the United Farm Workers. A resolution submitted by Brother Shelton that come in uh, a little after we they got the uh, kit stuff, so we're just going to pass this one out, and I'll just I'll relieve you, Tom, and read this one myself if you want me to. It's short. Uh, <clears throat> Whereas the struggle of the United Farm Workers Union against the grape and lettuce growers in California is one of the most important struggles against racial and economic discrimination in this country, and whereas Cesar Chavez and the UFW have called for expressions of support and solidarity from organized labor and individuals throughout the country. And whereas Mississippi has some of the poorest and lowest paid farm workers in the country, and we must face this fact, by supporting the UFW in their struggle, we can open the doors to help our brothers and sisters here at home. Now, if therefore be it resolved that the Mississippi FFL-CIO expresses its unqualified support for the United Farm Workers Union in their struggle against the oppressive practices of the giant agribusiness concerns, be it finally resolved that the Mississippi FFL-CIO write a letter to each local union and local central labor council urging them to establish boycott committees in the areas of the state to support the United Farm Workers in their struggle for justice. Respectfully submitted Cecil Shelton, President, North Delta CLU, and North Central A. Philip Randolph Institute. That, of course, is not submitted in the name of the board, but nevertheless, it's a matter that I think this board ought to be on record in support of. I move the adoption of the resolution. Okay. I'll second. Any discussion? <coughs> Uh, we'll, we'll get around of which committee is going to handle this resolution. I don't recall right now, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. And whether it's you, Brother Fly, or let's see who is the chairman of the other one. It'll be in uh, the Resolutions Committee. Pro yeah, Resolutions. Who's chairman of the Resolutions Committee? Yes. Brother Fly, when you, uh, when you uh, take this up and report it out, tell them that this resolution has also been endorsed by unanimous vote of the state AFL-CIO when you report it out. 
Okay, we got one more, but before we get to that one, I want to recognize a very distinguished vestor just walked in the door. She thought she was going to sneak in here without anybody seeing her, but we ain't going to let her get by with that. Uh, Sister Fanny Neal with the National Cope staff, who is in uh, our state trying to help us get some things together in the 4th Congressional District. Uh, Fanny, we're all happy to have you here. We'd like to give you a chance to speak to this distinguished body here. Uh, Paul, I don't want to really speak to them uh, now. We just want to get a little more access to in the 4th District, and I'll be around for a couple of days, so I know I'll get a chance to talk. I um, have been, came in yesterday and got some rest, and then I poked around a little bit, and I think we're going to have something wrong. We're supposed to have a meeting this afternoon. Is that at 3 o'clock with some students from both Tougaloo and uh, Jackson State to talk about their participation in the Get Out the Little Drive for our candidate. And um, this is what we're all about, just trying to help defeat cops. We're happy to have you here, Fanny. Let's, let's give her a round of applause. Fanny is formerly the Amalgamated Clothing Worker in Montgomery, who, Alabama. I wonder who was <laughs> going to do that, you or Tom Knight. Uh, you, you had it done to Tom Wood, I'm sure. <laughs> Fanny, try to make that three days instead of two, will you? Think about it. Now, <clears throat> we've got, uh, I got another matter, another resolution, a subject resolution that uh, I'd like to uh, take up with you at this time. Uh, James, you remember here a couple of weeks ago I made an appearance down at Southern. Right. Of course, you uh, weren't able to get over. I was supposed to go, but I wound up. Right, you weren't able to get over for it. I think I sent all of you copies of that speech that I made, the statement that I made down there. I, I hope it met your approval. I tried to deal with the tax problems while I was dealing with some other things. But anyhow, there was a college professor met me after that meeting uh, by the name of Now, I believe his name is. <clears throat> He's a former minister from down on the Gulf Coast, Russell. He used to be at one of the churches there in Moss Point. But he's very interested in the Olympics and uh, talked to me about the possibility of uh, our board adopting a resolution uh, on, uh, on the Olympic situation. I'd like to first read you the letter that he wrote me. I suggested he write me a letter <coughs> and then send me a resolution uh, dealing with the subject. So I'd first read the letter. Enclosed, dear Mr. Rams, enclosed, find a recommendation <coughs> which we hope you will be kind enough to introduce to the convention of the Mississippi FLCIO. I hope the cooperation of the union working. <coughs> Uh, I hope the cooperation of the union working man of the state of Mississippi will make it possible to assist this most worthy cause. Uh, signed by Senator yours, John F. Nall. That's N-A-U, I said now. N-A-U, no, or now. I don't know how you pronounce that. No. No. Let me read you the resolution. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Whereas the 1976 Olympic Games will be held in Canada, and whereas our young athletes are endeavoring to compete against athletes of other countries in these games, <clears throat> and whereas our national government does not subsidize these athletes, and whereas the laboring man of the nation in Mississippi has always shown a deep interest in all of our people, especially our youth, Therefore, be it resolved that we recommend that each local chapter, that should be local union, of the FLCO of the state of Mississippi contribute both moral and financial assistance to the sending of these athletes to participate in the Olympic Games to be held in Canada in 1976. What's your pleasure? Would you like to endorse that resolution?
Well, I think, well, of course, if we adopt the resolution, it, it's like any other resolution we adopt. All we can do is to make sure that it's called to the attention of the local unions, and if they uh, feel strong enough about it, they'll make a contribution. If they don't, they won't. But the thought here is that we will go on record in support of, uh, of trying to help finance the athletes to participate in the 76 Olympics. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a man, in this, man or woman in this, in this room that wouldn't go on record in support of it. Right. Okay, do we have a motion to adopt that resolution? I move it I uh, all in favor, signify it to say an aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. <clears throat> Let me tell you what committees are going to have what resolution now. Uh, those of you that are on, on uh, the two main committees, that's Education, COPE, and Legislative, and on the Resolutions Committee, these are the two committees that's going to be handling the resolutions. So you're the ones that needs to make note of this. Uh, resolutions number one, two, four, and eight. We'll go to the Education, COPE, and Legislative Committee. One, two, four, and eight. Five, six, seven, nine, and this one we just adopted would be ten, would be going to resolutions. You want to call them back at me, Bob? Three, five, six. Right. The last one will be 10, right? And I'm going to give you this one, Brother Fly, the, uh, the copy of resolution number 10, and that will be the only one available. So you'll have the copy of resolution number 10. We, of course, got others in the office. We're trying to get it typed, but I can't say when. Yeah, they, it's available. Yeah, they got one. Yeah. Don't have it on paper. They even the paper Monday. <laughs> 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 Y'all got that? Uh, he wanted to talk of, at you for a minute. The benefit of anybody uh, in response to Brother Fly's question earlier about where you meet and whatnot. We got the whole place reserved starting now. Around to the right of the elevators there, down that hallway going north, there's three rooms there. They got a big long name for them, but it's A, B, and C, or one, two, three, and you can count either way you want. Now, there's three rooms that are available from now on throughout the convention. Nobody owns them, you know, no committee's got priority over the other, just so two committees don't try to meet in the same room at the same time. And then if you run out of room, uh, we've got a few other rooms around different people have that we can make room for another committee to meet there. So. You've got three rooms around there, beginning right now. Let me ask you another question. Yes, sir. Uh, have you got any place a road worker could talk with if they want to? Well, you can, those can, those can be opened up, Bob, uh, if uh, you want to, into one big room. Somebody to eat with nobody to uh, Well, you can always come back in here, and if we need to, we can get them to move these chairs and stretch these walls across here. It's not quite as much space here as it was in Heidelberg. You know, it's just a little bit tighter. I just wanted to be able to eat Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't, it'll depend on the committee action, you know. And I don't think the committees are going to have them all tied up. So you can open them up in one big one and one little one or three little ones or one big one, you know. Any way you want to do it. Right? You can come in the convention hall here and meet, you know, in one corner. Not any way you want to do it. Now, let's talk a few minutes about tonight, to be exact. Senator DeMondale will be arriving at uh, around... Uh, six o'clock, thereabouts. 
The American Income Life Company uh, will be hosting a reception here in this hotel. Anybody that checks in as a delegate or as a guest will be invited to come by the reception. We're going to try to get the senator down here somewhere around 7 or maybe a little after and give up about an opportunity to shake his hand. Now, we have arranged for a dinner meeting tonight with the executive board of this organization, with a senator, and a few invited guests, just a few. We'll have to invite the uh, income, the insurance people, because they're picking up the tab on the big shindig, and we think we at least ought to buy them a dinner. I've invited uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor William Winter and his wife to attend this. And unless somebody knows somebody else that ought to be there, that's going to be it. Now, we've got a problem here, and we've been wrestling with this one for months, is how do we deal with this situation? A lot of people out there are uh, uh, trying to figure out ways they can rope the Senate and have him tonight. And the best they're going to be able to do is get him for breakfast in the morning, because we're going to have him pretty busy around here tonight. If y'all want all the details on this, we'll give it to you after a while. Bob's grinning. He knows what I'm talking about. Now, <clears throat> if that meets your approval, that's the way we're going to do it. Anybody got any objections to doing it this way? It means that, uh, <clears throat> that around a little before 8 o'clock tonight, now listen to this very carefully. Those of you on this board in this room now, that includes Amy and uh, Brother D's down there, uh, you try to sneak out of here, away from this reception, go up to the shed and up the street, it's on the same side up the corner up there, back in the back in one of their private dining rooms, and they'll direct you where the affair is going to be. That thing is going to start right at 8 o'clock. We're going to try to get it started at 8 o'clock tonight. Okay? Now, is anybody that can't be there, will you let me know? Because we're going to have to pay $8 a stake again. Would you run by the 8 o'clock again? Yeah, I don't got it. Do what now? Be here at 8 and then go No, no. The reception here starts around 6. All right. It runs from 6 to 8. That's what they're going to try to hold it at. Sometime before 8 now. Y'all get away from here. Leave the reception. You be to the Sheridan by eight. <laughs> the <laughs> dinner. Two after. The dinner will start at eight o'clock at the Sheridan with the senator. Tom and I will have to try to sneak him out of here some kind of a way and get him up there. Okay. <laughs> just whatever you do. Uh, this, this is your invitation. Uh, we we and just I keep it to yourself. Can well, we can't, can you know, we can't in be inviting a lot of people. We wind up with two or three hundred people at a, at a private dinner at eight dollars a throw and break the organization. So we decided the best thing to do is to have this board have dinner with a senator with two or three invited guests. Unless you all have got other ideas, uh, you know, this meets your approval, that's the way we'll do it. Now, I've talked to a few of you about this, and this whole thing has changed from day to day, and that's, that's the latest plans. Okay? At 8 o'clock tonight at the Sheridan, if you can get out of here, and please don't get too drunk before you get up there. If I want to ask you to talk a little bit. Now, we ain't through yet. All right. All right. Yes, that's the next thing. In the morning. If we just make it to the night. Make it through the night. <laughs> right. <laughs> we make it through the night. Somebody sang that song. <laughs> we just make it through the night. In the morning, God willing, we start this convention at 9.30. Brother Taylor, uh, <clears throat> we want to talk to you about the rules uh, before you adopt them finally, because I think Wednesday we're going to have to start at 9. But right now we're dealing with the morrow. Tomorrow, these people that's going to take the senator off, and I, I don't know this, but I got a sneaking feeling this is what's going to try to develop. They're going to try to get him out of here in the morning and have breakfast with him. And I put them all on notice. He'll have to be back here at 930. Now, <clears throat> we'd like to use this executive board as the escort committee for the senator. 
That means that, uh, Brother Jackson, you and the people on the Restoration Committee will have to cease the restoration uh, somewhere a little before 10. We're going to try to start up here at 9.30. George Johnson will be uh, presiding, opening the convention. We've got Bishop Brunini, as you'll notice, to give the invocation. When we start up, we'll only have George Johnson, Bishop Brunini, and myself on the podium. We'll go through the preliminaries, try to get the convention called to order and get all that out of the way. In some kind of a way, we'll try to get Tom Knight the, the word that we're ready. And at that time, he will lead the executive board up to the stage up here with all of you folks in attendance as members of the, of the, of the escort committee. Uh, how does that set with you? And bring Mondale with us. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're supposed to have him with you. <laughs> yeah, by all means, we, we don't want you to come up to that without the senator. Yeah. Now, now, now the senator has to be back to the airport shortly after 11 o'clock. And we'll have to try to have things worked out some kind of a way, Brother Dees, I'll give him your name, uh, that you and perhaps one or two other people would hustle him out there, get him in a vehicle, and get him to the airport. Thank you are ready, I assume, for that. Amy can't go. Amy said she'd do that. <laughs> no, She's done she seen his go. picture. <laughs> She's seen him in person. <laughs> All right. All right. Maybe tonight. The main thing is, Dees, you'll have your car ready. And uh, if somebody else wants to jump in there with him like Amy, y'all can get him to the airport. Okay? All right. Uh, let's talk about other guests now. Right. Let's, let's talk about the rest of the convention a little bit. And... Uh, <coughs> some things that I think perhaps we need to think about doing. We, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of distinguished guests. I hope you've looked that agenda over and see who we've got on the program. Uh, we've got some very distinguished guests at this convention. And you won't believe this, but we've had to turn down a lot of convention speakers. Everybody wants to address this convention this time. That's what I'm looking for. Copy the agenda. But it appears to me that we ought to think about an escort committee to escort all of the speakers. Uh, sometimes we'll have two or three people bring a speaker up, you know, grab up a handful of people uh, to escort one. Maybe we ought to think about an escort committee period for everybody. Everybody brings in the speakers. Bob Woodson suggested in the office the other day uh, was talking about uh, Fred O'Neill who is uh, president of the Actors Union and also a vice president of the AFL-CO. I said, well, Bob, maybe we ought to, I guess we'll have to try to get us a committee of black uh, people to escort him. He says, hell no, we don't want it all black. So uh, he's right. And uh, so maybe we ought to think about a committee uh, to escort all speakers. Have your views on that one real quick. We don't want a big committee to bring up one speaker and nobody bringing up the next one, you know. It's too, I agree with that. It's too difficult, I Mr. Chairman, to have too many. I'd have about six people. Now, this is my own thought. Right. It's too difficult to get them together as much as there is going on. I'd have about six people, to, as other than, of course, the Mondale thing. Uh, well, now, we're talking about side of Mondale. Now, we surely we're not talking about Mondale. We're talking about the speakers after Mondale now. Lord, what do you think about this with respect to somebody, say, like David Boyd? That anybody All right. on this board from that district All right. with Raymond Goodman. We can settle this thing pretty darn fast. I'll tell you how we'll do it. I'm going to appoint a chairman of an escort committee for each speaker, and that chairman can get him a committee together to come up there with him. We'll handle that situation in a hurry. You, you saw that one, didn't know it. Let's go over the agenda real fast. We're going we're gonna to solve that problem right now. <laughs> you are here. You and him are wind up in a dark corner back there. 
first. You let me talk first. Yeah, during your picture, I ain't gonna buy that. <laughs> Tom's got it. Don't lose that. I can't I'm run this convention if I can't count. I think that. Some of them turned upside down. Now well, we're going to have a problem. Who's going to escort Mr. Knight? You're setting in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right in front of the fire and rain now. <laughs> that's what I want. That's what I want. You're right. Take your chairman before don't let them get this. All right. They don't. It's going to be a small convention. <laughs> well, there's some of them won't be a problem. Now, on, on uh, Monday, tomorrow, uh, you know, I'd hope all the board wouldn't leave the podium when Mondale leaves. Of course, uh, uh, I guess you will get up and walk out of there with him. Yeah, we have to. Have to. We're going to be the escort committee. Right, you'll have to escort him out. All right, Don Slayman. Don Slayman will be the next speaker out of Meany's office. He'll be bringing the greetings of the Honorable Meany. We got a lot of honorables on this program. I you? noticed that. I noticed there wasn't nobody that wasn't honorable. <laughs> well, we, we had honorable a honorable Tom Knight. We, <laughs> well, we we had quite a discussion in the office about how we deal with this. And I said, well, let's just make everybody honorable. And I decided to do that. But you notice here's a, here's an honorable. That's like all Close attorneys put on. S Here's the only one in Well, now, now you know how come everybody's honorable. <laughs> he had just done I got slighted. He got if you'll slided. also notice, I ain't even on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> No, we we got a problem here with the next president of the United States addressing this thing. I decided I'd just let him have my time. Uh, I'll have uh, I'll have a chance to have a few words to say hopefully before the convention is over with. All right, let's see if we can get this this escort thing solved. And we, we, yeah, uh, uh, Don Slayman will be here. All of y'all will have left with the speaker. Uh, then could you turn around and bring Slayman back, Tom? Uh, registration committee chairman can't. We got to be registered. No, you're gonna have to go back out That's and start. Right. Boy, I'll there you go. Know. If you want me to, I'll gather up a contingent of the board and we'll what? bring Slayman in. Yeah. Right behind. As soon as you get. Right. Okay. All right. Don't that'll happen. Mondale and loose and grab Slayman. <laughs> Well, give a I know it. Give a report. Uh -huh. right. We got a report ready. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna try to. God, that's even heavy flame. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to get a few things done uh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. process. We start to escort yeah. Mondale. Uh, Well, we're going to have to, the chairman of the credentials committee, some kind of a way, is going to have to be ready to make a partial report well, before. Well, we don't have three things going at one time. We ain't getting no one. Well, that's mm -hmm. right. Well, while he's appointing committees, I can go out and get whatever we got. All right, let's, let's, back up there with it. All right, let's, let's take a look at what we've got. We're going to bring the, the, the center down. He's going to make an address. We're going to have to then get him out. All right, soon as things settle down. Then I'm going to read out the committees. I'm going to name the committees. I'm going to refer the resolutions to the proper committee, right? Right. That's going to take a little time. So while you're doing that, I'll get my report together. And while you're doing all of this, hopefully you can give us a nose count on the number of delegates that have been seated and those delegates that I'll have give been given badges will then be together. officially seated, right? right? Brother Taylor, hopefully. Uh, when he gets through with that report, <clears throat> then you'll be ready to come up with the rules. Now, we'll have to get some delegates seated before we adopt the rules, right? 
Right. That's the reason we have to do it this way. Seating the dog has to be the first order of business before you do any business. Right, right, right. So, so that's going to all take a little time. And by that time, Tom, by that time, you will have the senator out. Things will be settled down a little bit. And then you can have your committee, when we give you the sign, walk in with Don Slavin. Okay? We'll try. We'll try. All right. Then that will be the, <clears throat> you know, after we introduce guests, we'll have a lot of guests we'll have to introduce. We should be approaching the lunch hour about now. All right, then we're going to break for lunch, and Bill Winner will be the first speaker after lunch. All right, what we'd like at that time is to have a good delegation from this board on the platform with him. You don't have to escort him in. We ought to bring him in before we convene. He ought to be there when we crank up. Yeah, I think we could escort him out as he speaks. All right. Well, how, about a, how about one man from each congressional district there? From, uh, uh, nah. why don't we uh, put, the board up put, the whole board put the board up there? Those that's not busy. He, James Kane, he's on restoration. Thanks. <laughs> huh? That's it. That's the podium. <laughs> that's they the can't stage. put the board up there. So <laughs> it's <laughs> Wait, what can't? <laughs> let's see who all, let's see how many members of the board ain't on restoration. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, it is. Three, three, four of us kind of aim it. It's on that. All right. Can't we ask the board? Well, no, I want them five. We got five. All right. The race committee in this room. Those board members, those board members who are not on the restoration committee, can you not be on the stage at the opening of the afternoon session? Huh? Huh? Tom, can you bring the lieutenant governor in? Yeah. And uh, you'll be following him. Then the rest of you try to be on the stage uh, when we crank up at 1.30. <coughs> Those of you not on restoration, okay? All right. Now let's see. Will we, we will now be down to <coughs> Norman Hill. Well, Tom will be speaking ahead of Norman Hill. The, the Constitutional Change Committee, chaired by Jones Fitzhugh, will meet at 3 o'clock here. And they will be making their recommendations on the constitutional changes at this hour, at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Whatever changes are made will have to be made tomorrow because nominations are the next day. If they make any changes in the makeup of the board or the executive committee, the number of vice presidents, that will have to be done tomorrow before we start nominations Tuesday at 10. Okay? And we'll, we'll let Mr. Knight be responsible to get Mr. Blunt up there because we'll have this before the floor and then we'll have some people available to get Mr. Blunt or his representative. He's not going to be here. All right. I'm worried about him getting to the podium. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have Mr. Sala on the podium to start with Tuesday morning, <clears throat> along with Mr. Starnes. There won't be any problem there with those people. The next one will be Fred O'Neill. So Bob Woodson will get a committee together to escort Mr. O'Neill up. Yeah, at the, uh, <clears throat> we've uh, got a plaque prepared. This, of course, was done, I believe, at the last board meeting, wasn't it, where this was agreed mm -hmm. upon. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a nice plaque prepared to be presented to Bob Starnes, and we'll have a check for $100 an envelope we hand to him. We, <clears throat> we'll do all of this uh, right after Jim Sala gets through, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully... Uh, get Bob Starnes to uh, preside over nomination of officers. Uh, 
<clears throat> you see on there at 10 o'clock, we, we have to go into nominations. I jumped that. I assume everybody knew we had to yeah. do that anyhow. But we'll let uh, Bob Stone preside. We we let uh, <clears throat> Jim Sala make his speech, uh, then recognize Bob and uh, present him with a plaque and ask him, uh, you know, we'll go through a little right. ceremony and all that stuff and uh, present him with a plaque. And then at that point, he'll preside over a nomination of officers. After the nominations roll with Bob, that's when Fred O'Neill will speak, and you'll have your committee ready <coughs> when I take back over, and I'll I'll give you the sign, and you can bring <coughs> Mr. O'Neill up. Incidentally, Fred O'Neill was born in Mississippi. I raised uh, left here when he's a youngster, but uh, I'm sure all of you be interested in this. That Fred O'Neill was born in Mississippi. I got a bunch of stuff here on him. All right, Marvin. <coughs> Marvin, let's give you that assignment now on board because you are here. You will be responsible for getting a committee together to escort board, right? All right. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Well, <laughs> all right, uh, Mr. Chairman, just one minute. Yeah, uh, it's so handy. Yeah. Right. Well, <clears throat> we got Bob Perry <clears throat> on next. He's been with us before. I don't see any problem there. We'll try to, I'll try to get a handful of people together to bring him up there myself. All right. Who's going to escort Theodore? Joe Frank? He's in my home. Yeah, Doris, is Doris, Doris? Is car in. She could be. How about you, Doris? Would oh. you be responsible for getting us right? All right. Good sir. thought. You get us a committee together and bring Theodore up there. Now put me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Okay, that's very good. Uh, Amy will get her committee together and bring up Bob Perry. Right. Who's that, what's that now? Bob Perry. Yeah. See, he I think Perry, Perry's yeah, a pretty good senator. Fed, he's yeah. a pretty good senator, and I think he's going to be running for lieutenant governor. He's from your home county, ain't he? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he lives at Holly Springs and Marshall County, but uh, he's in Lafayette He represents Lafayette County, though. That's what I told Clark. All right, you got your assignment. Amy <laughs> will get Bob Perry. Doris will get... Uh, <coughs> Theodore. All right. Down to the banquet now. When that would get over the next day, I'll talk to C.B. Turner about uh, Bradford. That's who he works for. I'll get him on that one. Uh, Miss Gandy. Which one of you ladies want to be? The escort on that one to get responsible for that committee. Both of you? All three of you. Let's, I think we won't have all three of you on this one. Evelyn Gandy, the insurance committee. This one. Uh, Amy and Mavis. Mavis, you uh, don't have a, you're not responsible for a group. How about me assigning you the job of having, getting a committee together for Miss, Miss uh, Gandy? Okay. Okay? The Honorable Dean. Mr. Woodson, this sounds like a good job for you again. I'm, you and Bob <laughs> fly. Uh, we ought to get the people out of the 4th District, I guess, on okay, this board. Mr. Sunfield was going to fly. We would get George. George Johnson. Yeah. Bob, <coughs> uh, let's see. You're going to be chairing a committee. I hate to. Uh, George Johnson? 
Well, the mm -hmm. thing is, he's not on this board, and he don't, he won't know it, and I'd like to forget about it. I need to get somebody on this board responsible for it now. I'm going to take her to Jackson. Yeah. Jack, will you be here? Uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Would you, uh, could you make a note then that you will get a committee together to escort Kenneth Dean to the platform? Now, on Mr. Abel, I'm sure we'll have a pretty good delegation present here that would like uh, to, uh, I'm sure we won't have any trouble getting people on that platform, but in as much as we'll have Steve Williams and Nick Zonerick both here, Steve, of course, is uh, quartered eight in the IUD thing in uh, Tupelo, uh, you, in as much as uh, you're in the middle of this one, how about you being responsible for getting a group of people to bring Abel up? Keep in mind, we'd like to have Nick and Steve and, you know, some as well as some of our local people up there on that program. That would be you and Underwood. Who else we got here involved in this? Howard? Between you and, between you and Joe, we all are. Uh, you know about who we want up there. Well, Howard, see, let me, let me tell you. Howard Strebel, uh, the district director will be here, you see. And then you're going to have Clayton. Uh, well, you know who your folks are. Right. All right. Uh, let Joe and Howard and uh, Brother Grantham here. Uh, we, by all means, want the representatives of the Steelworkers Union involved in it, as well as people involved in the IUD program. You know about what we're going to want, okay? All right. All right, we're going. We're going to come to this now. I've got the, the arrival time of uh, of uh, all of the candidates. We're going to go over that and see. Wait, before we get away from this, what, where on this agenda does the resolution committee report at? On convention business. <laughs> where you see convention I mean, business listed, that's where we take up the committee report. Well, I, I would like to know so I'd be prepared at that time. I mean, which one of these convention business would you refer to? <laughs> <laughs> the one that is currently the one that in it it right. could be anywhere. Okay. The big problem here, <laughs> any, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> finger on his trigger, the hog. What's the name of the chair? No, no. <laughs> Here's, here's what you have to deal with in one of these conventions. Hopefully these committees can get together and get ready to make their reports. And then when we get a little time, I'll try to call you up. You might not be ready for a full report, but we can get some of it out of the way. Well, hopefully, hopefully you can call a meeting of your committee. And this applies to all of them. Tomorrow afternoon, after we recess, and get into your, con uh, your resolutions and be ready. I don't think we'll be calling up any of your resolutions tomorrow. Well, be not Tuesday not. or Wednesday. Well, it's like this uh, uh, bylaw, the Constitution Committee. That has to be done tomorrow. Right. right. But the rest of them, we won't get into them until Tuesday or Wednesday. Right, you just try to get your committee together and get your report ready and be prepared to make it uh, on a short notice. That's right, right? All right. Well, let me give you the arrival of the speakers and see if we can make arrangements to pick everybody up. Norman Hill will be coming into 633 Sunday. Bob, can you have somebody pick him up? You Norman. or Cecil or somebody? Norman Hill. Norman. Yeah, we'll be Six thirty-three today. Delta flight seven two four this afternoon. Right. Brother Woodson is supposed to be with me and you at that time. I I know, but I'll get somebody. Okay. 
main thing is having somebody pick them up. Tom and I, uh, right, that's right, we're going to try to get him. What, to, all right. what was that flight number again? Norman's flight number 724, that's Delta. It's 633. Brother Grantham, yeah. uh, you'll be wanting to talk to Clayton and perhaps Howard and some other people will be here Tuesday. But Abel comes in at uh, 621 p.m. Tuesday. I don't have the flight number. Clayton. 621. Clayton Moss has got the flight number. So you get with Clayton and Howard and some of the Howard Street will some of you be here. Make sure somebody meets him and brings him to the hotel. Okay? Uh, he has to leave again uh, uh, Wednesday at 540. He's going to have a short committee meeting. He's supposed to have a meeting of his IUD committee here uh, <coughs> Tuesday after, I mean uh, <coughs> Wednesday afternoon. But it can't last long. Uh, we need somebody to pick up Don Slayman and Nick Zonrick. Brother Dees, would you be available this afternoon to pick up Don Slayman and Nick Zonrick? They both come in at uh, on flight 345 uh, at 4.03. 4.03 this afternoon. Right. Three, four, five. Zonrick and uh, O'Neill, Bob. Zonrick, uh, Zonrick, uh, you know Nick, don't you? I, I, have you ever met yeah, Don Slayman? Slayman, I don't. All right, you know Nick, so they both are going to be on the same flight, according to my information here. So you bring them together. That'd be Nick Zonrick and uh, Don Slayman. Steve might want to pick him up. Yeah, the main thing wants somebody to get him. Uh, okay, Brother Dees, you talk to Steve. Steve might might have plans to pick up uh, Nick already. Main thing that I want to make sure somebody picks him up and gets him out of here. This place kind of hard to get to if you don't know where you're going. Right. Uh, Fred O'Neill, Bob, comes in at 1.25 p.m. to, no, wait a minute. No, that's the departure time. He comes in Monday, 4.57, flight number 457. That's Delta. Delta 457. The time and the number is the same. Number <laughs> the one I came huh? on last, week before last. At 4.57 p.m. That's tomorrow, Monday. And now he has to get out here at 1.25 and hopefully we'll have somebody to get him to the airport, you know, getting out of here, going back. Main thing is pick him up and make sure he gets you, and then we'll try to get him back. Jim Sala will be coming in this afternoon, but he's got transportation. That's it, Tom, uh, I think, on the speaker. Let's see if we've got anything else now that needs more attention. I know that we all know, maybe it's not officially announced, that uh, Senator Monday is a, you know, candidate for nomination of the Democratic uh, uh, Party. Right. Uh, usually when this happens, the Justice Department usually has some kind of security. Has yeah. It been put under security yet? I not told me anything about it, Fia. Got one guy with him. I've been requested to uh, make reservations for a room, a uh, single for a guy that'll be with him. If there's anybody like this coming in, I've thought about it myself. They haven't advised me. You're right, uh, a man that's, you know, in this position usually. Probably this far back away from the campaign, they would, right. Claude. If it gets near, right. I mean, it's really, you know. Right. Well, I think that we've just about taken care of the business that we needed to take care of. Marvin, just one thing on the rules. Uh, we need to start at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Do that again. I, it is needed, not moving. It's supposed to be
testing. One, two, three, testing. 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 One, two, three, testing. Got up. Might not have had it up now, high enough. You just didn't have this high enough. See how it needle working now and me mm -hmm. talking here, see? Mm -hmm. Now it'll now it'll record. Testing. See? Um you don't want to say Well now you do this good. If it's gonna take you to get it, then you can cut the volume down when you go play it back. Mm -hmm. it's too loud. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Woodson's got one, okay. First of all, we got to on your election, and I will certainly look forward to working with each and every one of you, and we want to make sure that we get the correct mailing address of all of the new board members. Now let's see, we got Lewis, Brother Tucker, Right. Mayor Frank. Right? Everybody. I'm going to send this around. Give us all you know about yourself. Tom got. Uh, Everything will be all right. I'll go right now and touch base again. Tom, that we. Give us your name, address. You want to get out this afternoon? Number and your telephone. I'm checking out. Yes, yeah, going on here. I'm not necessarily going to get ours. You've already got it. Well, I'll just put it on that. The policy is, man, that we pay uh, any expenses you got on getting back. You incur any expenses going back if you've been elected. That's been the policy. Any questions on that? Those of you that have been on the board that have expenses to turn in, now's the time to fill out your voucher. Have you done that? We've got to get our hotel bill. Yeah, you'll need your hotel bill. All right, then uh, we can do that one or two ways. We'll come to order. We have several things that <coughs> is necessary to take some action on before you leave here, and we'll try to act only on those things that uh, uh, we think we need to act on now, and uh, <coughs> other matters uh, can wait till we have another meeting when all of you are not such a big hurry. Uh, we can't call a meeting to order until he's officially obligated. What is that? You, you mean he missed it? Yeah, he just out the door and then we stuff there and we uh, whoop, whoop, around whoop. and then he sit back and he's done this. Uh, well, it's done days. gone when he come back. Well, we'll let you obligate it. Get your constitution to obligated. To thing now. <laughs> well, <laughs> since he's going to take it by himself, is the goat still tied out there? And repeat my name, you repeat your name and then follow me. I, Thomas Knight, Oliver and do hereby promise, to hereby promise, to faithfully perform, to faithfully perform the duties of the office, the duties of the office, to which I have been, to which I have been elected, elected to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and to the benefit, and to the benefit and honor, and honor of the Mississippi AFL-CIO, Mississippi AFL-CIO, and in the event. In the event of resignation, of resignation, or removal from office, or removal from office, or at the expiration, or at the expiration of my term, of my term, I promise to deliver, I promise to deliver to my successor, to my successor, all property, all property in my possession, in my possession, belonging to this council, belonging to this council. I further promise, I further promise to protect and defend. And the American Federation of Labor, American Federation of Labor, and con Congress of Industrial Organizations, and Congress of Industrial Organizations during my term of office. During my term of office. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Frank. Welcome aboard. One more cup of coffee, and we'll start. Right, I'm sure we get. Glad to get you up again. Like I said, when Russell Davis gets through with you, you all wish you had to took that obligation. All right, let's see if we can get started. There we go. We got a several things that's more or less routine, but nevertheless, the board needs to go on record on them. Uh, first is the duties of the two full-time officers. Uh, I've been handling the legislative end, and Tom, of course, is the pol uh, political education director and what have you. And if you would like to offer a motion that the duties remain the same, that'll suffice. I second. 
Uh, any discussion on the motion? Well, I think I might say, Mr. President, that uh, they may ought to know now I may kill some of these politicians. <laughs> you have our permission. Thank you. We'll send it to back. Okay, all in favor of the motion Wait signify it to say an aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Now, there's one thing that <clears throat> I think that I need to bring up in connection with my duties as uh, in charge of the legislative <laughs> program, and that's the fact that it's very apparent we got to have some help. <clears throat> At least I have. This organization needs somebody on top of that legislature pretty well all the time since they've started the annual session, the pre-filing system and all that. It's impossible for me or any other single individual to be on top of it at all times. Now, I've talked to Jim South <coughs> about <coughs> the possibility of him assigning uh, one of his staff people. He has two in the state, Jim uh, Touchstone and Dan Ory. I had quite a discussion with the two of them about this. And uh, we're supposed to see what we can get worked out on that. Now, I assume it's all right with you. You've assigned me the responsibility of the legislative program that if I can get something worked out from the assistant, that meets your approval. Is this okay? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Now, in the event we don't, uh, I think uh, I think we, you know, we're too far gone now to do what I think has to be done. If we can't get something done, though, at a future board meeting, I'm going to have to lay out a program with it. I think we have to adopt to be on top of that legislature at all times. I mailed all of you a copy of a letter that I wrote to, what's his name, uh, the sheet metal, Grayson Moore. He called our attention to a uh, passage of a bill in Florida where they had, you know, emasculated workman's comp law where building tradesmen were subject to suit. It's that simple. Well, now, if we don't get on top of this situation, sooner or later that's going to happen to us. And with the annual sessions being what they are, with the pre-filing system where they start pre-filing bills, you know, six months before they come to town, we have got to have somebody that can study these bills and keep me informed as to what's in them, okay? That's enough of that for the time being. Uh, we have to name a women's activity director at the present time, Sister Amy Hollowell, who is president, is in that position. Uh, could we have a motion that she continue in that position? I so move. Sure, Vanessa. Passed on that one, Amy. Very popular. Any other father nominations? Any further nominations? I believe you move she stay in the position. Though. All in favor of the motion signify it to say an aye. Opposed? Uh, motion carried and so ordered. We need to name a director of minority affairs for the organization. The present time, Brother Bob Woodson is holding that position. I move he continue. Second. For the record, let's see who second that. I make the motion. There's several seconds. Turner, second. Motion by Jackson, second by Turner. You ready for the question? Ready. All in favor of the motion, signify it to say an aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Overruled. The chair will note that the motion almost carried unanimously. <laughs> I guess the next thing that we need to uh, talk about is the salaries for the full-time officers. Uh, this uh, is usually, well, this is the first order of business, at least one order of business at uh, the first meeting after election. Uh, you got any comments before we take that up, Tom? No, I don't. Of course, I think we have. I think I have to be consistent with what I said uh, this afternoon, what I've uh, been saying for some time, and you too, as a matter of fact. Regardless of uh, what we like, I think we have to recognize the fact that we do uh, have problems, that money is not plentiful, and of course uh, we have uh, sought to get some volunteer money with a resolution here. We have instructed the President to call a special convention 
after we've had time to monitor the economy a little further to talk about increasing the capital tax and so on. I think we have to uh, consider this and uh, anything that we would consider along these lines. If I were for the benefit of the new members, you might ought to quote what it is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure all of I'm getting there to put this down uh, for me here right now. I think it's 25000 This could be, you know, a few dollars one way or the other. And, of course, the Legislative and Education Fund, which is begged, uh, strictly hustled, you know, from different ones of us out of the various unions. This is uh, legislative and education money. It is Treasury money. We've got about $13,000 in, uh, in that fund. And then, of course, our Coke Fund, which is strictly money off of the help, is just very few dollars, maybe three, four hundred dollars. Well, that's about what the financial and the affiliation. Yeah. Uh, what, what's yeah. the average? What's uh, the uh, forty two? Forty two five hundred. Forty two five hundred. Averaging about forty two five hundred. Now, Claude, I remember also, and I don't want to be talking about it this week. I remember you yeah. wrote us a letter recently, within the last few months, that said at the end of this year, the national FLC CIO might drop the subsidy they've been right. giving us. Is that still? Right. Is they still cut it down to three hundred, and as of uh, first of the year, that'll that'll stop, right? Right. So we'll no longer have that to depend on. Unless it all. I can convince them to continue, there's possibility that we might get it continued. I don't. Uh, but that's the status of that, yes. Right. right. Well, I'm going to make a motion that we increase it by a thousand dollars on each one a year. A thousand dollars a year. All right, we get a second to that. Second is we increase the salaries there. A thousand a year. It'd be eighteen two hundred and sixteen five eighty five or whatever that is. You. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Chairman. This salary. Uh, the salary, let me see, you you all adjusted the salary. You gave us a 7% increase. Uh, how long ago was that now? It's been two years. No, 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 no. Thank you. You yeah. gave us a seven. I think it was about a year ago. Right. If I right. remember, right. Right. Year ago. it was close to a year ago. See, it's been two years and a half since the last convention. You know, that was March of '72. My impression it'd be about a year, maybe 15 months since the last increase. Realize it's been that long. It ain't quite been quite that long. My God, I know it was. Sandy sugar. 
That's a bag. I don't that's believe one bag. Make us less than you. Well, the motion is that your salaries be increased up with a thousand dollars a year for each one of us. And we had a second. Do we have any further discussion on that? How much, how much is that a week? $83, I mean a week. Roughly about $20 a week. Roughly about $20 a week. $21 a month. A week? No. What, what's that percentage? What? About $20. I'm no percentage. Well, it'd be one against $18. One against $17. Seven or eight, I'd say. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, would you accept an amendment to the motion? Yes, I'd Somebody wants to make another motion for a better deal, I'll withdraw my motion. It's on the floor. It's been one, so. uh, motion's been offered and uh, seconded, and it's, it's uh, before the body, so you can amend it. Yes. I, I would like to amend the motion to read the present salary request, request 18.5. Okay. I'm lost on the Secretary of State because he's got some unorthodox figures over here. The same amount for you. The same amount for you. That's 1300 Well, you're saying 1300 right. is what you're saying. A $1,300 increase? Yes. I'll, I'll accept that. 16800 and what would that make your still? Tom would be 17, 8, 5, 80, I mean 8, 85, 8, 85 if I count right. 17, 8, 85. 8,500. 8, 18, 5, I believe. 17, 8, 85. Well, I said 85. 85. Okay, he's talking. Now you've offered that, that amendment? Yes, sir. All right. You got a second to the amendment? Yes, Okay, you then the amendment uh, to the motion is before the House. Are we having a discussion on that, too? on the amendment? Question. All in favor of the amendment signify it to say an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. That's actually a substitute motion because you inserted a different figure. Right. So we, we have uh, set the salaries in 18, 5, and 17, 8, 85. Correct? Mr. Knight, do you have anything else that's uh, of an urgent sort of business here? I just want to kill Mr. Stanley over the town. Over the town. They just I might mention uh, the, no the, the information uh, of the board. Well, based on the conversation you and I have had at the next board meeting, we will probably submit some suggested changes concerning our requirements uh, for endorsement of candidates. We have had some problems, and we still have some problems, and we have some things in the back of our mind that we're going to suggest, uh, which of course would have to be ratified by the Coke Convention, but we're going to some, come up with some suggestions to change the requirements, uh, our procedure to some extent for endorsing candidates. I would, I would like to make a request. I don't know Well, we we'll, we'll be happy to do that. Of course. Well, I, we we appreciate it. that, and I appreciate what you've done here this afternoon. Unfortunately, the way this thing went, nobody knew it was going to wind up like it did. And uh, but before you left here, you had to tell us what you wanted to pay us here beginning this new term. Uh, We'll get all the poop together the next time we have a board meeting, and I guess it'll probably be somewhere around the first of the year. Then if you want to revise the salaries upwards, you can at that time. You know, you got control of the situation. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to raise a question. Uh, I'll make a suggestion for one. Uh, for the last seven or eight years that I've been a board member of the AFL-CIO, I know that uh, 
it's a cost of sword, and we've all recognized that. And I find that in most situations I feel, and I, I notice that all the international countries have increased it, that this 10 cents a mile is just about inadequate to travel anymore. And I think it ought to be increased at least 12 cents a mile. It's already 12. It's already yeah, 12. 12? Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. He's going to take a constitutional amendment. <laughs> right. 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 Spell out into the Constitution. Right. 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 Huh? It's twelve on twelve out on meal, but it's ten on mileage. The, the, the expenses, this hotel bills, up to twelve dollars a day for meals, ten cents a mile for automobile. Now, <clears throat> you uh, you adopted a, an amendment to the resolution you submitted a while ago about. Uh, a special convention in conjunction with the Cope Convention, and I assume that any matters like this can be taken up at that uh, at that convention. Well, I, I didn't know. I didn't recognize. I didn't recognize uh, a, a, a thing that things can be dealt with. Well, let me, let me let me explain something to all of you. And I feel I feel kind of bad about this situation we just come through with. I might as well get it out and let you know about it. We had uh, this kind of a thing to happen at the last convention. You know, one of the closing days, we elected officers, and uh, uh, we had uh, a situation where one of the people got the highest number of officers could be declared elected because he was in conflict with the Constitution on two people from the same CLU district. And I was instructed to set up a committee to uh, review the Constitution and make certain recommendations to this next convention. And, you know, in effect, it took the whole matter out of the board's hand. I was instructed to appoint a committee, which I did, Jones Fitzhugh, chairman of that committee, and he, uh, you know, he set up a subcommittee, at least I appointed a five-member committee from the Jackson area to review the Constitution and make some recommendations to this convention. He came and met with our board. Our board could, couldn't decide what they wanted to recommend to him. So then he and his subcommittee works on it. We appoint members of the board to work on the committee. Then they bring in their recommendations. I didn't know what their recommendations were going to be, and I doubt sis, if anybody here knew what they were going to be, except the members on that committee after they met with it, you see. But what I'm trying to get across to you is this. By virtue of that motion, we appointed this committee, and we assumed that they were going to bring in any and all constitutional changes they deemed necessary. That's the reason the matter that you're talking about was not brought in by the executive board because we were dependent on that committee to take a look at the overall constitution. You get me? But instead, they... We get, hang up, we get hung up on the number of vice presidents, the length of the term in office, time. and all that stuff. We wind up spending a lot of time. It goes back in committee, find a diet there. Perfect. You see, next time, we don't have a committee set up. The next time, if I'm still around, then, then I assume that some of you will still be around, this board itself will have to make some recommended changes in the Constitution, as we always have. It's just unfortunate we all this happen. Okay? Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Uh, why not m uh, make those uh, suggested changes in this, if we have a special session? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Instead of, uh, and then it'd be all over with before the election of officers and everything, and it'd cut out the few. That is a good idea. That's a very good thought. Do you mean that this board would make some recommendations to that special convention uh, deal with not only what Bob's talking about, but perhaps uh, changing the board and the vice president and all that stuff? Is this what you want to do? Appoint a committee. Appoint a committee. That's, that's a very good I'm thought. Then, then we know what's going on. Then we'll have some semblance of control over it. Very good. The board you have you know, right. That's right. Absolutely. Know what's going on before we, before we come down because a lot of them do make some plans, you know, at the regular convention uh, concerning an election and 
and then they come down and the thing we found out this time it couldn't be changed you know at the at the convention and well what we can do at that special convention make the changes submitted to me yeah. office and go in effect at the next that's, regular convention that's, that's a very good thought would you like to offer a motion to this? I'll make a motion that we do this. Okay. We get a second? I'll second. Okay. That's a very good motion. This way we'll set up a committee to be working on recommended uh, changes, constitutionally speaking, at the special convention, and we'll go to work on that. All right. Uh, you, you heard that motion in a second. We have any discussion. All in favor of that motion? Yeah. I'm just asking a question that might be relevant to the motion. Yeah. Do, it, do the Constitution, uh, is there any policy now that provides what time of year this convention is called? The special convention? Yeah. It's left at the discretion. Uh, we got, we have, committee. we got a, yeah, we got an executive committee. We have a certain amount of leeway, but uh, this will be an election year, and they want us to set it in conjunction with the Colt Convention. Uh, we'll have to check this out on, on dates and places and what have you. The, uh, uh, here's the Constitution on that. It provides <clears throat> that, of course, we have to wait, or we supposed to, now this has been stretched a little bit, to interview candidates until the deadline for qualification has passed. Now this means that this is 60 days prior to the first primary in our election year, which is the Tuesday after the first Monday in August, which would be along the first week in August. The deadline to qualify is about the first week in June. And then you've got to have time to interview candidates and make some recommendation to make to the convention. So this means uh, probably the middle of June or something like this. You can't have it before that time, and you can't wait much after that time. If you do, you're too late. So it's pretty well tied. That's right, right, right. We don't have too much leeway, but that's generally the the motion. The motion was, I believe, correct me, brother Orman. The motion was that uh, that the board uh, appoint, I guess, assume you mean me, appoint a committee to recommend to this board uh, some proposed constitutional changes presented by half of this board to the special constitutional convention tied in with the Coke Convention. This is it, isn't it? Okay. As I understood his motion also, though, the point yeah. would be board members. Board members. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. Board members right. on this. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be members of this board. That's the motion. We was on this uh, uh, these guys and ladies was on this subcommittee. Right. As long as we came in on uh, Saturday or Yeah. Monday, you joined the subcommittee that's been working, right. I don't think it's fair uh, to, to uh, and I don't think you meant it that way, to criticize that subcommittee. Because when we went in that meeting, they was highly heat off at the executive board. That's what I said. They came out there and presented a bunch of changes and the executive board turned thumbs down and then they wouldn't tell them that. So I said that. Said the hell, would it, you know? I made that statement a few of my mentions. And I think there was some resentment about the board being a part of that committee and the like. I realize that. I fully acknowledge that. And it's very unfortunate the way the whole thing worked out. And, you know. I agree with you, Joe. Brother Fitzhugh, I must say, you know, worked long and hard on this project. The problem was he couldn't get enough people to work with him on it. Now, all of you remember him coming before the board, and he made a presentation. Well, obviously, he had spent a lot of time on it. But, you know, some of his thoughts, uh, the board never could make up his mind what direction they wanted him to go in. Well, some of the clouds were so involved, like he wanted to direct yeah, I agree. vice presidents by congressional <laughs> district. Line, I agree. Which was, sounded sort of impossible to us if we sat there. So I wonder if it would be. Meetings, I guess. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. 
Just a, a suggestion on the motion. Let's get a little order. You think uh, you want support on the motion? Uh, I wonder if it would also be a good idea to maybe mail a letter to the locals or in central bodies and so forth to say and if they had any suggestion, turn them into this committee. Maybe the committee could get a feeling of how all the people in the state, after all, that's who we're supposed to be representing. And, and could uh, old blind hog pick, picks up an acre every now and then and somebody might turn in a, a, a real good suggestion that somebody else didn't think of. This is a good call. Right. Now, <clears throat> let me say one more thing. We're going to deal with a constitutional convention, special convention. Uh, any proposed changes to the Constitution under this arrangement will have to be mailed out to each affiliated organization. What, how many 35, days? 35, 35, At 35, least 35, 35 days before the, before the Constitutional Convention. That will have to be done. Uh, well, I, just, I was just wondering, it's just an a idea, wondering if it would help maybe to combine everything. Uh, if, right. if you ask uh, locals and central bodies, right. if they, uh, after you told them who the committee was, to turn in uh, uh, you know, like a bylaws, uh, gotcha. most locals have bylaws, and they say turn in anything you want to change in bylaws, turn in the bylaws committee and let them consider it. And I wonder if this would help any. It might do it. The motion passes, <coughs> and we'll appoint the committee, and, uh, uh, you know, I'll be happy to do this if the board wants to adopt a motion. If they don't, we'll do it anyhow. All right, you ready for the question? All in favor of the motion? Signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. All right, so we will appoint a committee. Now, you want me to name any specific number or what? It's up to you. We left that up to you, I thought. You want to do it now or you want to wait a while? Wait a while? It's up to you. That's up, that's up to you. All right, let me think about it a little bit. I realize, of course, you don't want to spend a whole lot more time here. Uh, we'll think about that a little bit, and uh, we'll talk to a few of you, and uh, get back in touch with you, I guess. So uh, let's see, we got, uh, let's see, Brother Woman, Jackson, uh, <coughs> see who's on the executive committee now. We got Brother Woodson, Tucker, and Robert Woodson. Why not, why not, why Kelly? don't we do it this way? Why don't you just authorize uh, <laughs> me to bring this matter up to the next meeting of the executive committee, and let us take a look at it, and then get back in touch with you. We'll try to get a meeting of the executive committee sometime in the very near future. And uh, when we feel a little better and think a little clearer, maybe we can uh, come up with some recommendations <laughs> for you. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> How about that, Mr. Underwood? I might, okay. I might say this having served on the subcommittee, my toes have been, yes. been hurting over here a little bit. <laughs> uh, in view of the time, Thirty-five days and all that. Right. Uh, it would take you know now until the next meeting because it takes time to get everyone together and then to really do something to do it effectively. Right. We agree. Everybody here is in complete agreement, right? Okay. So I've been authorized to uh, appoint a committee. And I'll leave that up to the executive committee. I will now refer that matter myself to the next meeting of the full executive committee. And as soon as we have a meeting of that group, select members will be back in touch with the members of the board, okay? And then we'll try to proceed from there. Now, we don't have any plans to have a meeting of this uh, board until sometime after the first of the year. So we'd like for you to give us some uh, indications a little later on, not today, as to when would be a good time for us to call that meeting. Sometime in the month of January, I think we need to have a meeting. You're talking about a full meeting. Yeah, a meeting of this whole board. Right. right. We hope to, you know, probably a lot of part of January, we'll probably need to get the executive committee together. Uh, let's see, this is October, November, December. We've got but two more months left in this year. Uh, we'll tr what we'll try to do is get the executive committee together somewhere around the early part of the year, 
And as soon as we can make recommendations to you, get back in touch with the full board and probably have a meeting of the full board somewhere around the early part of February or no later than the, you know, the middle of February. Now, how does that sound to you? Does that give us enough time, Mr. Knight? Okay. All right. Do we have anything else? That, yes, sir. On, on this board meeting, uh, the election workers have already scheduled our meeting in the latter part of January, the first of February. Yeah. The state they, electrical meeting. Yeah. You so give if us. You let me know. Yeah. We won't schedule it on that week. Would you let me? Have you you haven't set the date yet. Not necessary. Do we need to set the the place and the time of the next? convention we might ought to think about setting this thing now in terms of a place you know these things slip up on you friend and you have to book hotels a couple of years in advance quite often and I think perhaps we ought to decide the place perhaps not the you know not the date and the hotel and all but decide where you want to have it at yeah the Cope convention in 75 yes in the time, in terms of the place, the date, and all. Right. Well, y'all check hotels and all. That's and right. Somebody's got to do it. We can't. You got a question? See, we, we, bring it see back. we could name a town and you check and see what nothing available, <laughs> then you'd have to meet back and say, "Now what do right, we do?" So, right. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot me a vice president. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I know what a red. Well, we'll get that information together for the executive committee and let the executive committee make that decision. Okay. All right. Anything else? Time y'all get out of here, we'll think of something you ought to act on. You rushed us up too much. Well, let me let me say this. If we did, did say we meant that too. Yeah. 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 Yeah
You know, I found out a secret, I think, and let me tell them this, just to put a little humor in there. Better hurry it up, they're getting anxious. I was talking to the president of a local union about a month ago, and that local union wasn't affiliated at the time. That party was, of course, president of a central body, and they were affiliated with the central body. And they asked me if uh, one delegate could represent both a certain local and a central body. I said, no, it's a violation of the Constitution. Well, we got around to this particular party coming to the convention. I said, well, you know, there's a little problem now. Your local's not affiliated. Consequently, you can't be seated. Well, they said, you know, you've made a meeting of the local union and we hadn't had any luck. I said, well, have you still got a form? They said, yeah. I said, well, just get you a ball bat and start knocking heads together, you know. Three days later, we got the affiliation and the check, so maybe we need to get a ball back, you know? That's what I wanted to say. Mr. But Kelly is about to call me my attention to the fact that his motion wasn't voted on. I agree. agree it is aye. So I'm going to put that all in favor of his motion, signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. And I shall now, now officially refer this matter to the next meeting of the executive committee. Unless we've got somebody just has to say something, we're going to jump. Brother Dees, I want to congratulate all of you board and old board for the service you've done and let you know that I've worked some as part of the Mississippi AFL theology. My expenses is not too much. My salary is not too much. If I can be any help to anybody, please call me. Thank you. Amen. Question, Mr. Very, Dees, when will get some more money? He has been refunded, and you? Yeah. Uh, they have been refunded. Uh, well, I can't publicly announce it, but right. my boss was here, and this morning going to the airport, he says, you start writing contracts that don't put them in effect until November the 15th. All right, I want uh, you to get in touch with Riff Clark and Gulf Classics out here. I think they're interested. Okay. Amy, you want to have what a word to say? Yeah, anyhow, he, he is just about. <coughs> now, Amy is not known for long speeches. I'm no, sure she no, ain't about ready to make uh, one now. I would just like to say I appreciate uh, everything you've given me and the district I've been in. Uh, I know all of you are working hard to try to win these two elections that were about. And I got roped into the job again, and I made the statement to Tom and a few of the others that uh, if I'm made it through this election, I wouldn't, it, this was going to be my last one, and I, but uh, I don't really know yet what, <laughs> I hadn't made up my mind, y'all didn't give me time to say anything, so I'll let it ride right now, so we'll see how things work out, I'm a little too old to do all this, lo these long hours and this nightlife, and it's getting the best of me, <laughs> so I'm going to have to call it quits one of these days, but I, uh, I do uh, appreciate all the help you have given me. Hope you give me some more in the future. Oh, this is just a way of information on affiliation. We hope by the end of the year to have two new locals that we now right. trying to get a new set up on affiliated. Of course, right. you know the minute we do, they'll be right. affiliated. Right. Now, to about 400 <coughs> members, two, uh, 200. And we locals. think Russell <laughs> Kelly's got a couple of projects going in their shipyard. We're going to bring proof one of these days. Now, let me let me make an inquiry from the board members, not on the executive committee. If any of them have anything to say, because we're going to adjourn the meeting, and I'm going to ask the members of the executive committee to stay over for a few minutes. Okay. Going nowhere yet. <laughs> well, right. We'll fix Mr. Kelly up. I'll tell you. We're going we're going to adjourn the regular. Any matters that needs to be brought up by the members of the board that are not members of the executive committee. If not, we'll officially adjourn this meeting and will the executive committee members please stay back for a few minutes. <laughs>